Hello, hello, welcome to another video. I am actually going to demonstrate some incredible plugins for Illustrator today. So this video is actually sponsored by Astute Graphics. I have been testing out these plugins for a couple of months now and I'm just very impressed. I've been itching to tell you because if you design things, if you're a creative, you know time is money. And these plugins really have saved so much time and they've really sped up my workflow. So what I'm gonna do in this video, I am going to create a greeting card and I created this card using three of my favorite plugins from Astute Graphics. So we're using the AG Block Shadow Tool, using Phantasm, and we're also using Vector First Aid. If you do see anything in this video that kind of tickles your fancy and you want to have a go, Astute Graphics do actually offer a seven day free trial over on their website. So you can try it for free. I'll leave the link in the description. Thank you very much to Astute Graphics. And yeah, I guess let's get into this video. So I have Illustrator open and on screen is the graphic that we are going to create. On here, you can see I've got like a half tone texture. I've added these block shadows and I made this so quickly and I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. Scrolling over to this new artboard, I firstly need to create the text. Now this is in ITC Avant-Garde Gothic Pro font, one of my favorites. Once you have these words how you like, we're gonna go in and we're gonna apply the AG block shadow. So I'm gonna go up to window and I'm gonna go down to astute graphics, AG block shadow. Now this little menu pops up here. I recommend applying the block shadow so click that button and there it is applied all these settings so now if we tweak them you can see it moving so we can change the length so if you just want a small simple block shadow behind the letters something that doesn't go off the page you'd lower that down you can change the angle scale is actually a really fun one so if you lower the percentage of this it sort of makes it thinner at the end so it sort of tapers there's also gap which adds a small space in between the letter and the shadow you can see that it's adding a white space before the shadow you can click this button and it would adopt the fill color you can change the layer style and also the opacity but for this one i actually want the scale firstly to be on 100 i want the gap to be on zero and the angle let's just lower this angle a little bit and for the length i want it to be pretty high i want it to go fully fully off the page i just like that effect i like how it works so straight up you can see how editable everything is i'm gonna adjust this and the shadows come with it i don't have to do it again i don't have to overcomplicate things and that's what the plugins are all about straight up we've got two different lines of text however if we go back to the other one you can see i've got it in four different colors so i'm going to show you how easy it is to break things up and change them so if i go on to here and hit the t button or go up here to the text tool you can see that the words are still editable. I'm gonna cut those out and paste them back in, basically so I can separate the words. Now, these two do not have the shadow applied to them, but all we need to do is click the apply AG block shadow and it'll reapply the previous settings. We could change the colors of these by going into here, into the shadow color, finding a color you like, as you press okay, you can see it changes it. Same with these ones. You can also still change the color of the font as you would normally, so you go into fill up here and change it to, I don't know, yellow, and you can see that it changes. So it's very, very editable. I'm quite happy with these block shadows, so I am gonna set these in stone. I am going to highlight all of these, and I'm actually gonna expand them. Now, don't forget, if you've used Illustrator a lot, when you expand things, you can't get them back. So if you want to save a copy across the other side of the screen as a backup plan, go ahead. I do this a lot. If you've watched my videos before, you will know. So I'm going to highlight these. I'm going to go to object, expand appearance. Now, if I zoom in, you can see that each shadow has its own path, anchor points, etc. It's its own individual shape, which means we've got a little bit more freedom when playing with the colors. So what we want to do now is color each element itself so at the minute they're all grouped so i'm going to right click i'm going to ungroup 
and then we have the block shadow and then the word as another. So this applies to all of them. So I'm going to ungroup all of them. And I actually want the text to be in pure white. And then I'm going to go into each of these colors. And if I zoom out, you can see that I've got these colors saved over here. So I'm just going to eyedropper. And then let's add a background. If we just compare them side by side, it's looking pretty, pretty neat. So what I want to do now is have a play around with the color combos. These colors actually look quite dull in comparison to these. So we're going to go in and use the Phantasm tool to play around with the colors. So again, window, astute graphics, phantasm. First up, we have, these are things that you usually get in like Lightroom or Photoshop, but this has allowed us to apply the same things in Illustrator without affecting the original artwork. So we've got brightness and contrast, does what it says on the tin. There's hue, saturation and lightness, so maybe like up the saturation. If we change the hue, it changes the color combo. Exposure. We've got the color balance, if you want it blue tone, if you want it warm. There's the shift to color. So if I drag this slider up, it's set to red. So the more you slide it, the more red is applied. And if there's anything in a menu that you don't understand, just hover your mouse over it and a little pop-up will appear telling you what it is that that thing does. If you don't want any of these to be applied, you literally go down here, get rid of them and it takes you straight back to what you started with. I'm actually going to use a couple of things up here. So this top left one is levels. If you're familiar with Photoshop, you will know levels. And again, it's just adding that Photoshop function to an Illustrator file. There's also curves. Again, if you're familiar with Photoshop, you'll know you can click adjustments on here. Then there's also this one, which is duotone. Quite a fun effect. This is a one that you can definitely play with. So you can change the tint level and the colors and it will apply that color to each object. Again, it's something really fun to play with. However, for the moment, I am just going to go with contrast. So I want it to be a little bit more bright. So this literally saves me from going in each color, going to a color library, finding a brighter color or going to the color swatches and you know like it saves that. I can literally think oh I like the orange, I want it a bit brighter, drag that slider, done. So now we've got the colors sort of set how we like them. I'm gonna apply this halftone effect. Now halftone is this like circle pattern and it sort of fades down. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click on this yay and I want to apply it to this first so I'm actually going to copy it so command c and I'm going to paste it in front so to paste in front edit paste in front and then I want to apply the half tone to this so if I click this you can see it's added those circles now I'm going to firstly I want the color to be white and I want it to be monochrome you can change what samples it is so cmyk or sampled again I recommend just having a play so grid, you can do FM, you can do radial, but we want grid. I want it on alternating, so it's like a brick pattern. You can change the DPI, which basically changes the size of the dots. You can change the angle. You can, in fact, add an undercoat, which would kind of take out that step of me copying and pasting in front but we're going to ignore that for now and we can also clip to object so if you just look here you can see that there are some dots outside if i click this it would get rid of them it uses effectively a clipping mask and the thing i want to focus on is down here so it's dot gain now after fiddling with this i was amazed so if i drag one of these sliders up you can see that it adds dots to like basically everywhere and i can drag these around and i can even drag them in the middle to change the different properties, which I thought was really cool. I want it to be a little bit of a gradient. So you can play around with this, change the sizes, etc. Or remember this thing we pasted on top? I am going to apply a gradient to it. I'm just doing this black to white one. So we've got it at minus 60. So then when we go back into Phantasm and apply the half tone, can you see that? It's got a gradient to it. 
I thought this was incredible. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is find a combo that I like. I quite like that. I do need to change it back to white and I'm actually gonna save this setting so I can load it again for these others. So I'm gonna click up here, save, and I'm gonna call it HT1. Once you've done that, then you can go into layers or you could go up here, I guess, and change the opacity. Thinking maybe like 20% and then we go back in and we can do the same effects to to these three. Copy, paste in front and I want to apply a gradient and then we're going to go back into Phantasm and apply the half tone and of course we can load that one we've just saved exactly how we wanted it. Press OK and then if I go into Opacity put that at 20% and there we have the like gradient half tone effect. If I zoom in you can see that there is a little bit of an overlap here that's just because how I copied it out. What I'm going to do is group these together and just bring them forwards and there we have the cool half tone effect and of course we want to sort of get rid of all this so I'm going to just use a clipping mask which is command 7. Look at that how easy was that? Now what I'm gonna do is show you how I use vector first aid to finally prep this for print. Again window, astute graphics and vector first aid. Now this is so intuitive. So this font, obviously we know what this font was called but I don't know, a month down the line I'd probably forget what it was called. I can't edit this anymore. I can't go into the text tool. It's now a vector. Well, <laughs> if you click this button here, this magic tool has sort of got a download of all the fonts on my system and it's gonna search for those fonts and it's gonna make this text editable again. When I first clicked it, it took maybe three minutes. It kind of looked through all my fonts and then did it. But now because it knows them and it's sussed out what's on my system, it takes a couple of seconds and there you go. I mean, you can see because these lines have appeared at the bottom, it's made this text editable again. So as long as you have that font on your system still, this tool will find them. I just thought that was incredible. It also has an option to replace all missing fonts. So if you've been sent a document from someone else, rather than trying to like relink them. This button literally does it for you. I actually want to show you how Vector First Aid can help when you've maybe hand drawn something and you've image traced it or you know it's something that's not quite as smooth as like a pre-made font. I use this as a mirror decal. I take it over to my Cricut software and I cut it out. However, if we press A on my keyboard and zoom in, you can see that there's quite a lot of unnecessary points in here and my Cricut machine would register these and it wouldn't create a smooth cut. Adobe Illustrator actually has a tool that is supposed to reduce excess points and that is in Object Path and Simplify. So if I turn this on, you can see Original Path and I can change these points. However, as I'm changing it, you can see things are moving. See this? Yes, it's simplifying my work, but it's also changing the shape of my artwork and that's not what I want. To get around this, Astute Graphics have created this amazing thing and it's called the Super Smart Remove Points. If we click on this, it removes points. That's it. That is literally it. So if you go down here, it says 277 points removed. You can see for yourself the artwork didn't change at all. If I undo it, literally looks exactly the same. Click it again, exactly the same, but there are significantly less points, 277 less points to be precise. And going back up here, the same principle applies. If we go into the clipping mask, we've got lots of circles, which will inevitably be a lot of points. So I've just released the clipping mask. If we highlight everything and go up here to super smart remove, it will remove any excess points. So this time it's removed 21 and click it again, see if it does any more, no points to be removed. We're good to go. This is neatened up and there's no excess anchor points. And there we have it. That is the video. I'll insert a picture here of what the greeting card looks like in a mock-up. They have been ordered. 
and they're getting delivered soon and I'm so happy. It kind of took the complicated stress out of product creation for me. Having the plugins really did speed it up. You can get all 20 plugins for just $119. So head over to their website now to check it out. Like I said, try the seven day free trial on Astute Graphics website and let me know how you get on. I'm intrigued. I'm already excited to create more things. Thank you very much to Astute Graphics for sponsoring this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you soon for another one. Bye. <laughs>